Welcome to Beside the Burn for Tuesday the 10th of October. We're continuing to think about the harvest. Uh, Sunday past was a harvest Thanksgiving Sunday in Burnside. and We met together and thought about the harvest that we produce in our lives. And how Jesus told us that the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few. And how we're to pray to him uh, to send workers into the harvest. As we did that, we discovered that we then are the answer to that prayer. Jesus calls us to go out into the world as workers in the harvest field. And as we go, he tells us to proclaim the good news and to tell others about the gospel. And we discover that that is difficult. Yesterday we saw how uh, the message of the gospel sometimes brings division rather than unity. Sometimes it is a sword rather than bringing peace. And today we come to an equally difficult idea and verse in the Bible. We're coming to Matthew 10 verse 38. And there Jesus has a very stark warning to those who would seek to be his disciples and would seek to follow him. It's just one verse we're thinking about today. It's probably one that you've heard many times before. And Jesus says, whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Jesus tells us that disciples need to take up their cross. And as we look at the life of Jesus, we see that Jesus himself took a literal cross and carried it. He was forced to carry it by the Roman soldiers. He carried it to his place of execution. And then he was nailed to that cross and lifted up on the cross. But what does it mean for us to take up our cross and follow Jesus? What is it that Jesus wants us to do here? Obviously the cross, it wasn't a symbol of of fashion or a decoration or a piece of jewellery. It really was an instrument of suffering and death. And whenever Jesus is speaking about us taking up our cross, he's calling us to, I suppose, embrace a life of sacrifice, a life of self-denial. Taking up a cross is a symbol of wholehearted commitment to Jesus Christ. Whenever you take up a cross, it involves setting everything else down. Jesus was carrying nothing else but that cross as he went to Golgotha for his crucifixion. He had to set everything else down in preference for the cross. And therefore, when he calls us to do it, he's calling us to surrender our desires, our ambitions. He's asking us to set aside our comfort, all for the sake of following him. It's a call to prioritise God above everything else. And that's what we were thinking about yesterday with the peace and the sword. That we need to set aside our relationships, we need to set aside our families and put Jesus first. It's not that we neglect those other things, but that we prioritise Jesus and our relationship with him. Taking up a cross also means that we are embracing sacrifice. You see, Jesus willingly embraced the cross because he wanted to bring salvation to humanity. We're called to embrace sacrifice in our lives and this may involve sacrificing our personal ambitions, it may involve sacrificing our material comforts or the approval of others for the sake of living out our faith so that others can come to faith. It's also about counting the cost. Jesus says in Luke 14, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Therefore, taking up the cross requires counting the cost of discipleship. It's a commitment that recognises challenges but chooses to follow Christ anyway. 
And taking up a cross isn't just something that we decide to do once. It's not something that happened 10 years ago or 50 years ago. It's a daily choice. It's about continually aligning our lives with the teachings of Christ, even whenever it's inconvenient, even whenever it's unpopular, it's saying yes to Jesus in every circumstance. Today, yes, Lord, I will take up my cross and set everything else aside. Then the next day we say, Lord, today I am taking up my cross and I'm setting everything else aside. It's also identifying with Christ. When we take up the cross, we identify with Jesus in his suffering and obedience. It's a powerful declaration that we are followers of Jesus and we're willing to stand with him, even in the face of all the difficulties of the world. So in a world that often encourages nowadays self-indulgence and the pursuit of of our own personal happiness, putting ourselves before everything, making sure that we're all right before anything else. Jesus calls us to take up our cross and to make a stand for him. And that is a challenge in today's world. It's a call for us to live for something greater than ourselves, to Follow the path of sacrificial love that Jesus set before us. And as we reflect on these words, we need to ask ourselves, are we truly taking up our cross each day? Are we willing to sacrifice our desire for the sake of following Christ? May the Holy Spirit, therefore, empower us to live out this radical life that Jesus is calling us to. Today, what would it mean for us to lift up our cross and carry it throughout the day? What else would we have to set aside? What else would we have to rearrange so that we could carry the cross for Christ? So let's pause and let's pray together. And as we do so, we're going to pray for our Presbyterian Church in Ireland and we're going to pray for a couple of mission opportunities. So let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to see how we are to take up our cross and follow you. Lord, it sounds like an easy phrase to say, but whenever we think about the implications of what that involves, it challenges us. It challenges us today as to what we will need to change so that we can carry that cross that you have offered us. Today, Lord, we pray for our Presbyterian Church. We pray for the rural chaplain, Kenny Hanna. And we give you thanks for the opportunities that Kenny has had in that rural chaplaincy work to share the gospel and to come alongside those who need you. We give thanks for the opportunity of a monthly uh, Bible study in Kilkul. And we pray, Lord, that you would open up the hearts of those who come along and that they would grow to love you and to know you. We pray, Lord, for three congregations today, Irvingston, Perico, and Tempo. We ask, Lord, that you would bless them each week as they gather for worship, and we pray that they would be drawn to walk more closely with you in all that they do. So, Lord God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.